Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to work with spawning and despawning in Pernet. Now it's super super easy, it's actually as easy as just instantiating and destroying as you're used to with Unity. Now first things first, I just want to go over some very basics. Almost all networking systems, they use some kind of scriptable to keep track of the objects that can be spawned and despawned in order to cross-reference. By default, Pernet uses this little default network prefab setup, but we're actually going to be making our own just to give us a little bit more control. So I'm just going to go into my settings folder to create to Pernet and to network prefabs. And I'm just gonna leave the name as this. And now we can actually feed it whatever folder it should take from. By default, it'll just take from your core assets folder. But since I'll be having all my prefabs in the prefabs folder, I can just drag and drop that straight in there. I also wanted to be able to also catch non-networked. So I'll disable this, which means it'll find all game objects, not only network objects. You don't have to do this but I just like this automatic little feature. And now something that we want to spawn or despawn could, for example, just be a little cube. So I'm just going to go make a cube and that's really it. I'm just going to remove the collider because I don't want to deal with that. And then I'm going to make it, I don't know, half size. And let's just plop that into the prefabs folder. And if we go back now, look at our scriptable, you can see now it's just automatically found the cube as well. And if we go look at the cube, that now has what's called a prefab link, which is what we use to cross reference with. Now going back into the network manager, we now need to feed it this network prefabs as well. So I'm just going to drag and drop it right in there. And that's really it. I'm going to remove the cube from the scene and I'm going to hit save. Now let's make a script and I'm just going to call this script cube spawner. Now in the script, if you remember in the last video on the first setup video, that we made uh, we actually had a component that automatically disabled or enabled components but we can also very easily do this manually and i just want to show you how to do it so we're going to inherit from network behavior and this requires the namespace of pernet and then in the on spawn method we're just going to go in here this can be the one with the bool it can be the one without the bool in this case it doesn't really matter uh, and i'm just going to say enabled equals to his owner so if we're the owner it'll be enabled if we're not the owner it'll be disabled which means if it's disabled, it's not running the update loop, which is why we're going to be checking for our input. So I'm going to do if input dot get key down, and I'm just going to go do key code dot e, for example. And now here we can handle our spawning. And as I mentioned, it's really as easy as just instantiating. But first, let's go to the very top and make a reference to our cube. So I'm just going to do public game object cube prefab, and this is what we'll be spawning. Now, if we go down here and I just do instantiate, we can then instantiate our cube prefab. We can do it at our transform.position, which is our player's position. And to be a little fancy, we can do it in front of the player. So we can do transform.forward. And then to give it a rotation, we can give it our transform.rotation to have our player's rotation as well. And here we are. This is really it. Believe it or not, this is the whole spawning script. Now, that being said, in the very first video, I mentioned that you should use the unsafe network rules, in which case this will work perfectly fine. Because this is client-side spawning, which means the client is allowed to just spawn and despawn as you want it. Going into the rules really quickly, just to show you, you can see in the very first tab up here called default spawn rules, you can see there's spawn auth and despawn auth and everyone and everything is set on in the unsafe rules, which is what you want for this. Alternatively, in the safe method is only allowing the server to spawn, in which case you need to go through RPCs, which will be another video. Now, all of that out the way, let's just set up player up so i'm going to go to the player i'm going to give him the script of the cube spawner i'm also going to feed our cube prefab and that should really be it now make sure everything is saved that your scene is saved and i'm going to start here and i'm also going to start my clone but here you can see my player walks around i just tap and tap and that works perfectly fine and you can see now that we have our clone in here as well you can see he also has the cubes that were spawned even from before he joined and now he can also go around and hit e and as you can see, they're both just perfectly fine allowed to spawn now, and it also syncs up. So it's really as easy as that to handle spawning. Now let's handle some basic despawning. So one thing, let's say in this case, I only want one cube active at all times. So what I can do is I can do a private, and we can just do game object, and I'll just call this underscore current cube. This is what will keep track of the current cube that we have spawned. So let me expand this really quickly. So everything happens inside of E. And now what we'll just say here is if underscore current cube, then we'll just destroy the current cube, which means if it exists, destroy it, which means it will no longer exist. And then we'll also just set this instantiation equals to. So every time we instantiate, we store it. It's basically as easy as that. And if you'd also like, we could also do a dedicated despawn. So we can do input.getKey down, keycode.q, and then here I'll just run the uh, full despawn like so. And so, yeah, it's really as easy as just destroying and instantiating. And now let me go back to Unity. And let's test this out. So now we should only ever be able to have one cube at a time. So now when I walk around and I'm also going to have my clone here, you can see as I move around, I hit E and it'll remove the previous cube. And as you can see, that's network perfectly fine. As I hit Q as well, it'll perfectly normally despawn the cube. And it's really as easy to spawn and despawn with Pernet. I really hope this video was helpful for you. If you like it, please do remember to leave a like, comment if you have any questions, or for that sake, just if you like the system and want to support. And remember to subscribe for more videos in the future. 
Also remember to join the Pernet Discord, which will be linked in the description and in the very top of the comments. We'll gladly be supporting you and helping you out there. And remember, the system is 100% free. Go check out the documentation in the description as well. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.